Hello Snack Pack! Welcome back to Travel Snacks! Also, if this is your first time, welcome to the channel! Um, <clears throat> is it better with, like, oh! My light broke! Ah! Hold on a second. Is it better with this, or, I guess it doesn't matter, really. Natural light's nice. Uh, so, welcome, welcome, welcome. So, uh, let me see who's in the house. Where are my glasses? Oh, hold on, I gotta get them. All right. Yo, Grant's in the house. How's it going, Grant? How's your Sunday doing? Grant is our moderator, and he has been around forever, so if there's anything that you guys want to ask that I don't get to, then he'll know, probably know the answer to it. And if anybody comes in here acting crazy, uh, then he has the banning capabilities. All right, so right now I'm only seeing Grant's message. So, okay, here we go, here we go. They're popping in now. Hey, Donnie. Hey, Miss Tucker 77. Hey, Linda Ann, how are you? Beautiful Sunday, a comfortable, oh, 80. Let's see. Hey, Susanna. Hey, Luke. Let's see, let's see, let's see. It is, come on. I have a not so great connection, so I apologize in advance. I might need to move up to the front of the van. Uh, it's a cool 77 degrees where I'm at right now, so you know I'm happy. Because for the longest time I've been in the desert and it was just unbearable, unbearable. So I'm in the San Diego area I'm parked right by the ocean, which I'll show you in a little bit. It's just so nice, so breezy. I have my Max Air fan going and I have my regular fan going, but I don't even really need to. So I'm parked here at the ocean and there's a bunch of teenagers and even like smaller kids jumping from these cliffs, like cliff diving straight up into the ocean, like off these tall cliffs and they've been doing it for hours. So I guess the, I don't know who, San Diego Fire Rescue, ow, San Diego Fire Rescue just is parked right behind me telling all these kids they got to stop jumping. I would imagine they're probably still going to stay there, but these kids have been jumping all afternoon, so I don't know where Fire and Rescue just came out of nowhere. Um, but yeah. Uh, yes. Hey, Terry H. from North Carolina. Awesome. I still got to get to North Carolina. Um, Mortimer Duke. Does the need for an emergency fund really need to be explained? The need for emergency fund while traveling full-time seems even more evident. Uh, you would be surprised. You'd be surprised. I think sometimes people get into a difficult situation and they, they're they just trying to make it in the world. Uh, and this is just a friendly reminder. So we're going to talk about it today. 64 in Carrollton, Minnesota. Oh, Carlton, Minnesota. Oh, that's a nice 64. Okay, the same stream seems fine. Okay, that's good. Um, in UK, it's is at 11 p.m.? Uh, 50 degrees at 8,000 elevation. Oh my gosh. Um, fun is illegal. <laughs> I mean, so, if you see the, the height of some of these cliffs, I mean, these are, some of these kids are like 10 years old. Uh, like, I, I was getting nervous. As a mom, I was like, get move away from the cliff. And some of these people were doing actual like flips off of these cliffs. Like, full-on Olympic flips. I was like, okay, I mean, clearly you have some practice, but still. I think they just don't want people to die, so that's probably fair. 
Hey Monique, how are you? How's it going? Hey Lisa from Texas, awesome. I'm a nurse, we talk in 24 hour clock. Yes, I got gotcha, you, I got gotcha. you. Retired 2019, I'm retired and an emergency fund is critical, yes. Hey fur baby, how are you? Finish on to Timothy Ward, oh yeah, Tim's my friend. Uh, you are so inspiring, X emergency fund is vital, yes. Hi Daya, how are you? Uh, I'm in, I'm, like I said, I showed you a brief thing about where I'm at. I'm parked like right um, in front of the ocean, so it's like a beautiful, beautiful view. And I've been here all day. Uh, hey Jackie, how are you? It's a beautiful day in Alberta, Canada. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so I wanted to do this live stream a little bit early in the day uh, because... I'm gonna stay here while we do a live stream and then maybe just a little bit after that and do a little bit more, uh, like do some planning for the week. Um, I'm also um, packaging up everyone's stickers. Uh, these are the stickers for those of you that are Patreon members. Uh, so I'm packaging up those today and addressing all the envelopes and getting them ready so I can take them to the post office tomorrow. Um, doing a little planning. Um, and so after the, after this live stream that I'm gonna leave this area. And once I leave this spot, it's pretty much, I'm looking, cause there's like three other parking lots like this, but on a Sunday, on a weekend in San Diego, if you're parked on the cliffs or on this area, once you leave and like later in the day, you're pretty much gonna lose the spot because people come here for the sunsets. Uh, it is kind of overcast though, so I don't know if they're gonna get a, a good sunset, but, um, once I leave the spot, I'm not gonna be able to get it back. So I'm trying to wait till later in the day because I need to go grocery shopping to get more of my healthy foods uh, because I'm still eating healthfully. Um, I did finish the 10 day potato diet. Um, I'm gonna be making a video, probably it'll come out tomorrow with my results, which I'm very happy with the results. And I'm continuing on eating very healthfully, very minimally not having any like processed foods, dairy, sugars, and all that stuff, um, because I really wanna get down. I'm pretty sure, I'm just making up a number, but I'm pretty sure I need to lose like 30 pounds total. So uh, I still got a ways to go, but um, it really hasn't been that hard. Now that I've cut out all the, like, all the stuff, um, I'm not really like tempted anymore. Also, I haven't had coffee in like two weeks. It's, that's the miracle right there. The coffee part is the miracle because everything else I can, you know, kind of pare it down. But the coffee, I, it's like my morning ritual. It's like something I enjoy doing. I enjoy having my cup of coffee. I enjoy just like cozying up with it, reading my Bible and stuff. Um, and I will be bringing back my coffee. I'm not going to give up coffee for good. But it's just something I'm doing for now because I drink coffee like a dessert. And so when I have it, it's full of sugar and cream and all the things. So I just decided to just cut it out right now until I can get a handle on my weight and get better like physically and just feel better. Um, so anyways, the point of that story was that after I leave here, I need to go grocery shopping and get some healthy foods because I'm pretty much out and I just have potatoes. Um, and it's funny because even after the 10 days, I think the next day, I didn't really have too much in the van, so I continued to eat potatoes. Not all day, I think I had rice too, but um, I wasn't like the most sick of them, which is kind of weird. So anyways, that video should be coming out tomorrow with the results. Um, so let's see, let me just see these comments real quick. Uh, yes, I did think by the water is awesome. Oh, you love the stickers? Yes, I love them. They're so, they turned out so good. Hey, Dave from Las Vegas. Awesome. Um, Chris says, 75 cool degrees in Birch Bay, Blaine, Washington. Ooh. Okay, Jackie says, hey, try dill pickle hummus. It's so good. It's good on wraps with using like a salad mix. Ooh, that sounds good. Dickle, dill, dickle. <laughs> I guess you could shorten it to dickle, dill pickle, dickle, dickle hummus. <laughs> That doesn't sound right. I don't think I'd buy something if it was called Dickle Hummus. That's that's a little that's a little too off-putting. Um, 
Hey, Tracy Weeks, how are you? How are you? How are you? People keep walking by my van and it's distracting. Um, so let me tell you, uh, you know, what's been happening over on my end. And usually I would have tried to do a few more. Um, what the heck? Usually I would have tried to do a few more live streams during the week. But uh, with all the stuff that's been going on with me being in the, the desert of being in 120 degree heat and just family issues and just like van issues and like diet weight issues and all the issues, I was just like, I just need to chill out for a second. I need to just focus on making my videos and chill out. Just like chill. Um, because I was like feeling like a kind of like a burnout type feeling of just like not so much my channel but just everything so um, usually I would have done a couple more live streams throughout the week so I'll probably do that this coming week um, actually I might not because now let me tell you the story so basically let me catch you up for those that haven't been following along and it'll be like a real quick story but basically my van has been having trouble it's been breaking down um, and ever since I came back to California it's only broken down one time and then I've driven so much um, and it hasn't broken down again. Um, but then when I finally left my parents' house, it one day, one morning, it just didn't start. It just wouldn't turn over. So I went to go get my portable jumper cables and I brought them to the front, you know, and just was like, just like sitting there for a few minutes. And then I was like, let me just, try to start it one more time and it started so there's no rhyme or reason what's going on with my van it's just doing weird things um, but the check engine light came back on and it's the same code it's the evap canister sensor thingy which is the thing that uh, the other mechanic said he fixed he replaced but that light just keeps coming on so um, a couple days ago I drove around San Diego I looked up all the reviews like found the ones that had like the best top reviews that said that it was an honest but like affordable-ish mechanic because I was like I'm done with the mechanic that's it my like where my parents live because he hasn't really fixed anything and I was getting like really frazzled and I was wanting to say something but my parents have to take their they don't have to but they take their cars there and my mom and dad didn't want me to say anything I felt personally like I wanted to say something and I needed to say something, but out of respect for my parents, because they're that, that's like they're also like friends with them, I I felt restricted and that's just not how I roll. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna have to take cut my losses. I've spent a lot of money already trying to fix it with that mechanic, and that's just the end of it. I I will just have to cut those losses and just take the loss on the money. Um, so I drove around um, a couple days ago and I went to three different mechanics. I like actually went in, talked to somebody and I had like the longest, I don't have the list with me, I had the longest list and I just went in and I said, can I talk to somebody? And I like, that was my first kind of like indicator, like would, would they actually listen to like all the stuff that's been going on with my van? Because if somebody's not willing to listen, then they're not going to really understand like what's going on. Um, so I went to the first shop the guy was really nice listened um, his rates were probably industry industry standard weren't too terrible I made an appointment with him and then I was like but they're like still a little bit high and a little bit uncertain which I do understand because when you're explaining like various things it's hard for somebody to give you like a direct amount until they look at it so I do understand that um, and so then I was like, let me just check with a couple other mechanics just to see if I could find somebody with a little bit better of a, like a cost. Um, so I went to the, these kids were so loud. Um, so I went to the next mechanic, which had like the most reviews of all like San Diego. It was like almost 800, like almost five star reviews. But when I went there, their prices were, I would consider them comparable to like uh, dealership pricing so I'm like I mean if I'm gonna pay that I might as well take it to the Chevy and like actually have them do it um, but they were really nice there as well they listened um, but their pricing was a little higher 
Um, plus, they had terrible parking in that area, so I didn't feel like I could even, you know, like find a parking spot. Also, um, a lot of their reviews were like for getting oil changes and smog tests and stuff. For those of you that don't know what a smog test is, is which I was actually like really confused because I did um, a video a while back, a while back, and I was telling, saying I had to go get my van smogged, and so many people didn't even know what that was. And I guess it's like maybe just a California thing or maybe like certain state thing, but a smog test is just an emissions test to like test. Um, like the level of like pollutants I guess you're putting in the air with your vehicle and so in California you have to get your your vehicle smogged every two years and or if it's an older vehicle you have to get them smogged every year and it's like 70 or 80 dollars and you can't re renew your registration until you do that so that that uh, mechanic had a lot of uh, like reviews for that so <clears throat> that's, that's just a basic thing that takes like 30 minutes. Um, oh, Nevada has smog every year. Yeah, so some states do, some some other states don't. Let me read some of these. Hey, Meredith, how are you? Hey, Thomas, how are you? Um, from Northern New York State. Oh, uh, yes, thank you, Graf, for posting that and posting the links. Um, emergency friend is not just for a rainy day. No, it's not. Hey, Mark, how are you? Uh, hey, Carolina. Uh, let's see. God bless you as well. Edward says, my check engine light came on 20,000 miles ago. I blocked it out with a magic marker. Actually, that's funny because when I was uh, traveling in the mountain states, my check engine light came on for the same thing, and I just put two pieces of Velcro over it so I don't have to look at it because it was just bugging me so much. Um... Nevada has small, oh yeah, I read that. Texas and Tennessee have them. Oh, okay. Emissions testing is a California thing, yes. Canada, no smog, maybe Toronto. Maybe, yeah. Texas or metrop metropolitan cities in, in the, I don't know, sure. Some other states do. Um, emissions testing is done in British Columbia as well, but not here in Alabama. Okay. Yeah, there's just certain, I don't know, certain states do it, certain states don't do it. <clears throat> so anyways, that was the second one. But I felt the price was too high. So then I just went to like one last one, pulled up, um, and I went in. And the pricing was a little bit better than the first guy. Um, also, the guy was like really a little more like hands on in terms of like, um, like he was listening, but he was also like trying to like figure it out before he even saw the van, like just thinking of different things. Or saying different things that he knew about um, and also um, one of the things that the previous mechanic did was he popped out the, the filler neck valve check so that now my gas spurts out when it's full um, and he said he couldn't find that part and so when I told this third guy like yeah the other mechanic pulled that thing out because it was turned to the side um, he's like well I'm looking here and I might be able to get it aftermarket and it would be a shipping fee but I could probably get it so he was just looking it up already without even like me committing to anything also they have a free shuttle so I can get shuttled over to my friend's house who lives here for the day and they have a triple a discount which I have triple a <clears throat> so for all those reasons it seemed like the package was a better for the price was a pretty similar to the first guy but he had other amenities that just made it feel a little bit more all-encompassing so I made an appointment for Wednesday and then I canceled the appointment with the first guy um, but the reason I say that um, you need an emergency fund is um, a lot of times I think people get into this lifestyle I mean I'm, I'm gonna be talking about like vehicle dwelling but this this goes for everybody really um, even if you have an apartment or house or anything anything can break anything can do anything but I'm just going to talk about people living in vehicles. I think sometimes people get into the like van life or car life or minivan life and they just think about the, what's in their vehicle right now and they think, okay, like I'm going to need an oil change, I might need new tires. And you might think like, you know, my, my van's in good working condition or whatever. Let me turn this fan off, it's getting cold actually. That's nothing, a phrase I didn't think I was going to say anytime soon, so it's very happy. 
Um, but even though like my van runs really well <clears throat> and I think these things are not like the most detrimental things to my van, but they're definitely things that need to be done. Also my rotors on my brakes need to either be, uh, evened out or whatever they call it or they need to be replaced and if they have to be replaced which is probably possible it's gonna be expensive so I I've been saving money since I started my van journey um, and I put it to the side for things like this um, and at the time when you're just when you're not making that much money but and you need to set money aside you don't want to do it because you're thinking, oh, like there's so many other things that I could do, like I want to do, and I don't really want to put this money to the side because my van's running great right now. But it always comes to the point where a vehicle is getting older, just like we're getting older, and parts on vehicles can get rusted, corroded, they can break, they can, you know, get disconnected, they can, you know, mice can get in there and eat up the wiring, um, there can be leaks. There can be all kinds of little things. And what I've realized is um, the mechanics are also raising prices with inflation. And of all the mechanics I went to, they were all talking about um, all the, because of all like the shipping delays and stuff, all of the parts are harder to get. And so all the shops that are selling the parts are raising their prices. And so in turn, the mechanics are raising their prices for like parts and labor and stuff like that. So the labor, um, like right now, like for all three shops was about the same. It was about $140 an hour. That's a lot of money. Like, I mean, $140 an hour. And if you have multiple issues, even if they're little issues, that'll add up real quick. So <clears throat> I don't really know how much all this stuff is going to cost me because there's multiple issues. But in my mind, I'm just going to like brace myself for like to spend like two or three thousand dollars which I don't think it's gonna be that much but I have to put it in my head that I'm gonna to have to probably deplete my emergency fund with this so that I can just get a, a handle around it because you know it may have, end up being like a thousand dollars and then I'll be like oh thank God and that's a blessing but if I don't think of it that way like it's gonna be the most then I'm gonna be like more shocked if they're like oh it's three thousand dollars and then I thought it was gonna be a thousand I'm gonna be real upset so again I don't think it's gonna be that but I don't really know at this point because it could be like a bunch of various things so the thing I want to say is like a lot of people that are getting into like you know living in their vehicles a lot of times people are just like excited to do it and they just want to jump in but I want to remind everybody that's on here and I'm sure a lot of you probably have emergency funds or you know don't need the reminder so I'm just take it or leave it but I want to just remind everybody that these things can come out of nowhere <clears throat> if you saw my last one of my last videos I ran into a pole that was my mistake um, because I was just like in a hurry and just like in a weird headspace um, I'm not even gonna get that door fixed because it's just like a cosmetic situation, but it could have been worse and I would have had to pay for that. All, all these things can happen in an instant and you could be driving around fine one day and just be like hearing a weird noise in your vehicle the next day. So even if you have to set aside $10 a week, $20 a week, whatever money you have to set aside for the week, I think it's really important that you get like a separate account so you don't get tempted to use it and definitely you know start putting that to the side and don't use it don't use it because it's really it's very it could be very tempting to be like well everything's going fine and as soon as you do that it seems like that's when the problems happen Hey, Ellie Mayhu Travels and Flagstaff, how are you? New York State does not have emissions testing, just, an, oh, inspection, okay. Carolina, I live in Texas and we don't do emissions testing around these parts. Okay, awesome. We just do inspections and plate, plate renewals. Oh, okay. Soldon. Hey, Soldon. I lived in El Paso and we had to do it. Oh, weird. So I guess it's different parts of Texas. 
Hey Tina S. Uh, this is my first live. Oh, welcome, welcome. I live in San Diego. You are not too far from Woods Automotive. They are very trustworthy. I'm a single two and finding a mechanic you can trust. It. Yes, awesome. Okay, awesome. Um, I do have an appointment with another mechanic for this Wednesday, but I'll, I'll look up Woods just in case. Uh, Carolina, I'm thinking it's a county by county. Yeah, I think it is. Hey, Jonah and Jolie praying for you when things like this happen it's called thinking on your feet it's not an easy life I tried it the first part of the year I didn't like night didn't like the dark I found oh okay yeah definitely thank you for the prayers uh, yeah definitely it's a different lifestyle for sure and it's not for everybody and that's okay everybody has different comfort levels um, they call it the United States of America every state you go to has different laws it's just a state of mind yes right Allison everyone needs to have an emergency fund yes same with the house if you own it. Exactly. And I used to own a house, so I know what you mean. Like, you could be just trucking along, you know, having a nice life, and then your garage door breaks or, you know, the water heater breaks. These are all things that actually happened to me. Uh, the air conditioner broke. The pool pump broke. Had to pay for a gardener. Had to get these tr hedges trimmed. You know, all kinds of things. All kinds of things. And, hey, some of these things are important. Jackie says, new batteries, new brakes, these last few months, $1,000 total, not even talking about the new tires, that's $1,000, and got from Costco, that's the best deal, so I, I hear you on the emergency fund, it never stops, exactly, I just got new tires, what, like, not even six months ago, I think, and that was like $750, so not only am I having to pay for that, and all the stuff, works I've, work I've already had done, now I'm having to pay a new mechanic for pretty much a lot of the same things, so I'm almost going to be paying like double. So I, during that time though, I've been still putting money away. So even if it doesn't get like, you know, even if I spend money like this coming week for a bunch of things, the next week I got to start putting money back in it because it, that, it never stops. It never stops. Even if you're parked in one spot for like several months, you know, you can start your vehicle back up again and something just loses loses its power or something so emergency 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 Charlotte says hey Charlotte drink green tea with stevia it has made so much difference oh okay I don't love the stevia taste but I haven't had it in a long time so maybe they've improved on it Kelly May, I'm sorry you're upset I feel for you thank you so much I'm actually feeling a lot better I was really feeling down just because of all this and I couldn't get a grip on like how to get my van repaired and just as a little side note I mentioned this in our patreon messages um, also if you're not a patron if you're not on patreon and if you'd like to support feel free to join on patreon because I post other things on there like more of a daily maybe not every day but pretty more consistently I post what I'm doing and where I'm going and what I'm into so you know if you're on patreon you'll get those updates sooner um, but I was posting in there that um, this is going to sound so bad because I'm not this type of person, but I love myself. Okay. I love myself. I've just, you know, I'm happy with who God made me, but I've been feeling like I look like crap, to be honest. I'm like, you know, you've gained too much weight. Your hair looks like crap. You know, you're looking older. You know, these are things that I've just been like thinking in my head. And even though I know like it's fine, it's not the end of the world. I just feel like I, you know, don't feel like myself. I don't feel like myself. I feel out of sorts. And that's why I've been really going hard, you know, on getting myself back in shape and getting healthy. Um, and I'm really dedicated to it now. Um, <clears throat> but I've been putting off getting my hair done because the lady that I used to go to in the desert or near my parents, um, she raised her rates and I love her and I love the salon. But um, to get my hair done would have been over $300. And I'm like, that's a lot of money. Like, that's a lot of money just to get your hair done. And then you got to get it. You don't have to, but, you know, you're supposed to get it done, you know, every six to eight weeks when you're getting your hair, you know, blonde. Um, and so I was just like, I just can't. Like, I can pay it, but I can't feel like, I don't feel like I can justify it. And so I've just been feeling kind of like, oh, like my hair looks gross, my grays are showing, I'm just like, just 
feeling kind of like gross, you know? And so I took like a good chunk of yesterday and just like looked at all the salons in like a hundred mile radius. And I finally found a salon that had really good uh, reviews, had put pictures to show like, cause you know, when you, a lot of the ladies on here was gonna understand like blonding, getting your hair with highlights is a skill. I've been to many, many salons since I've went blonde and not everybody can do it. I've had my hair fried, I've had my hair turn green, I've had my hair turn, you know, orange. I've had my hair like get burnt off. Like uh, I've had a lot of bad results with somebody trying to do blonde. And so that's why I've been sticking with the same salon for so long. But I don't really intend to go back to the desert that much. And so I'm trying to find somebody more like by the ocean. Cause when I come back to California, I tend to come to like the ocean area. So I spent like a good chunk of the day just like looking up salons and I finally found one that had, like I said, good pictures um, and they had a pretty decent starting rate and it's still expensive, but it's way less than what I was paying. And so I'm going to go get my hair done on Thursday. And so, you know, it's a, it's a little thing and it's one of the only like luxurious things I do for myself. And so to me, that's like a treat and it's a pick me up. So I'm really hoping that she does a great job. Uh, I'm very excited to get my hair done after so long. I haven't had my hair done since, I don't even remember, I guess maybe February or March. And when you do the blonde, like I said, you're supposed to be doing it like six to eight weeks so it's been way too long you can see like my natural hair is like grown out you know it's just like looking real rough real rough so I'm very excited about that um, it just like makes such a huge difference um, when I get my hair done and I'm thinking like you know I don't know 100% but I've been kind of thinking like once I like get my weight down and I'm feeling a lot better I might go back to my natural like dark hair just like all dark which would be like a shocker because a lot of you have only seen me with the blonde. Um, but it'd be easier for me to, to do it. Uh, cause I used to do my hair all the time, just like dye my grays and just like put little highlights, like basic highlights. Um, but supposedly I'm not like a fashionista, but supposedly, um, like the older you get, you're supposed to like lighten up your face so it's better to go lighter so i don't really know that could be like something i'm misinterpreting and i don't really know but for now i'm gonna get my blonde done again and then i might consider just like towards the end of the year going back to my dark hair but we'll see um let's see oh cold green tea that would be re re really refreshing um, Soldan says, do you stay in a hotel when your van is in a shop? So, um, my friend, she lives out here, um, about 20 minutes away from this mechanic that I chose and they have a, really, um, so the mechanic that I chose has a free shuttle. So, um, I take it in on. Wednesday at eight in the morning and then they'll shuttle me back to her house and then I will um, have some stuff filmed so that I can just edit at her house and then I told the guy that if they don't get it done um, on like in one day I'll come get the van because I don't want them like parking it on the street because it's like my home um, so I told them that I would just come get it and then I'll bring it back the next day and they can shuttle me again um, but I suppose like if uh, if I was in an area that I didn't have any friends, I would ask them if I could just park in their parking lot, like at the mechanic shop. Um, and if I couldn't, then I suppose I would have to get a hotel. Hey Monique, how are you? From Orange County, Anaheim. Awesome. Hey Rose, work? All the prices are higher, Thomas. Yes. Meredith, I hope you will have good results from the mechanic you have chosen. Bless your heart. You have been through some tough circumstances I pray things thank you so much Meredith I am really praying that this mechanic can get whatever's happening under control hey Lisa Zach 
Mark says, I was doing the van and this year I went out and bought me a camper to pull behind it. We'll see how, oh, awesome. That's gonna give you more space. Charlotte says, drink cold green tea with stevia. Yeah, I might give that a try. Um, everything goes up except my fixed income. I mean, it's true, like every, yeah, everything's going up and like, you know, like people on fixed incomes or making lower wages, it's, it's rough. Um, wouldn't the first mechanic be liable for work they didn't do right? Rose, yes. This is what I personally believe. That's what I think. I feel that I should say something because it's the same issue, but my parents don't want me to say anything, um, at least not at this point, uh, because I guess the relationship that they have with them, they don't want to make them feel bad or something. Uh, so I just had to detach myself from that situation because I don't work like that. Like if somebody does a job and it, it doesn't get fixed, then I go back and I say, it's not fixed. Like I already paid for this. It should be fixed, you know? And I feel that I should, they should, I should take it back and they should do it until it is fixed. Cause I already paid for that. But my parents don't want me to say anything. Um, and I just, I don't agree with it. So I just had to like let it go basically hey your girl pearl how are you lady trucker pearl here hey awesome i enjoy your content sis awesome hugs back to you that's awesome uh, rose says i make stevia and agave i don't like either one alone but together it isn't bad okay hey life and its challenges love yourself always yes indeed grant says stevia is my spirit of choice oh yeah i bet that's a good one um, is it Texas Lady Wolf? Uh, what to get your hair done? No. Yeah, to get your hair done? Yes. If you want to get like full blonde highlights, some of these people out here though, I'm not even kidding. I looked on some of them. They are starting at like 320. Some of them were higher. Some of them were starting at three or $400. And when I'm saying starting, like, so you started a, a price. Okay. And then if you have longer hair, it's more. If you want a gloss, a tone, a B12, if you want Olaplex, if you want um, any of those like extra services to like make your hair shiny, that th just keeps adding up. And then you add a tip on there. Shoot, you could be paying like 500 bucks to these hair salons. And that doesn't even include a cut. I'm not even getting a cut. Because these char these people out here, these so actual salons, they charge like at least $50 for a haircut. I, I don't think I'll, I can't unless I was like a millionaire. I'm not ever going to pay $50 for a haircut. I just go straight over to the Supercuts after I get my hair colored and get me a chop. I'm not paying 50 bucks for a haircut. I'm not saying that they're not skilled or that they're not worth it. I just don't spend my money that way. I just don't. It's a haircut. Uh, so, no. I'll just, I will pay for getting my hair colored, but... Mm -hmm. And also, I'm not paying three or $400. Yeah, it's a very expensive hair. It's ex it's so expensive. Sold on. That's why I love my grays. I don't look good with my grays. I have mine like I have that hair powder on, so you can't even see the grays right now. I mean, you might be able to, but it looks kind of dark. Rose says, "I'm so gray. I'm blonde again." <laughs> I mean, that's a way to go about it. I've seen people that have done that, where it looks like silver and shiny, and it's like in like a trend. Oh, Jackie! I thought I was your favorite sweeter. How cute! Gray is good. Gray is good. Joe Dirt's Travels. I had to put a new roof on my house and it cost more than the van I live in today. Sold everything, moved into my van. Life is grand, especially with the right, right travel sex. Oh, awesome. Thanks, Joe's Dirt's Travel. That's awesome. Jackie says, buying clothes and closing my, getting my hair done always makes me feel better about myself. Just glad we're putting, your, putting you first. Yes, it does make you feel better. When you just look like you have like a nice new style and you feel like it's a brand new day. Uh, and I have long hair, so my hair appointments take at least four hours. It's a lot of it's a lot of work for the stylists. So I'm like not like I totally understand the pricing, but at the same time, like right now, it's just so expensive. So I'm like I had to find something that was like way less expensive. Um, Ellie Mae, I am almost fifty. Um, no more fuzzy peach gummies, Grant. I left them at my parents' house. My mom's been dipping into them. She likes those gummies too. 
Um, but maybe after I lose a little more weight, I I might go, like when I go back to their house, I might grab some. I don't think I'll be going back to their house for a while though. Cause I, yeah, I'm kind of sick of the desert. <laughs> yeah. Uh, MA, how do you get your internet in the van? Do you create a hotspot from your phone or do you have a different system? MA, um, right now I'm using my iPad and uh, it has its own data plan. So I'm just literally using my iPad like a phone. So it's its own data. So it has its own phone number and everything. Um, and then my phone has its own phone number, of course. Um, but if I need to use my laptop, then I do have to tether from either my iPad or my phone. And the good thing is that um, now that I have both the iPad and the phone, I can tether from either one, so I don't use up all the like limit on the tethering. Uh, so that's currently what I use. Um, I have thought of going with another solution, like maybe getting something like Nomad Internet. It's like $150 a month. Um, and I guess it like is a little bit stronger of a connection, but I, I don't know 100%, so I might look into that in the future. Thank you, Edward, I appreciate that. Meredith says, I went back to my natural color, which is dark, and it's a relief. Meredith, you know what? This is what I'm thinking. Like, uh, especially when you're traveling all the time and you don't have a consistent, like, way to get your hair done. I can easily, you know, like, what I used to do, I used to go to Sally Beauty Supply, and I would buy the actual, like, um, toner and the color, the squeeze tube, and I would mix it myself, and then I would be able to do touch-ups, like, really easily. Um, I wouldn't even get the box color at the grocery store because it's really bad for your hair. So I would go and get what I needed and then I would like deep condition my hair and it would look shiny and soft and beautiful and no grays. I was able to touch it up whenever I needed to. If I started seeing some grays, I would just touch it up. Uh, and it was so much easier. And I could even do that at the Planet Fitness. I, actually, I could mix it up in the van, do it, and then just like when I'm going in for my shower, they won't even know. It might just look like my hair is wet. Unless I have like, you know, like hair color on my forehead, but I'm pretty good about wiping it off. Um, and then just go rinse it out. So that's why I'm kind of thinking of going back to my darker color. Um, but for the summer, I still want to have my blonde. So I'm going to ride it out through the summer. And then maybe towards the end of the year, I might just, just do it. Just do the natural color. Diet, uh, after Simon is all fixed, are you going back to Utah? No, after Simon is fixed, um, I'm going to be staying in California. I might go up and do a few things up north, like nor Northern California. Um, but I'm going to be getting surgery in a few months. Um, and it's a pretty long recovery. So I need to stay in the area because I'm on a call list for cancellation, um, which I'll talk about in a future time. I'm not wanting to talk about what the surgery is for right now. But um, California, I'm sure it's everywhere, but I can only speak to California, is really backed up with their surgeries. And so um, I'm on a wait list to get the surgery. And so I called last month and there was 15 people ahead of me. And I called a couple days ago and now there's like six or seven people ahead of me. So I'm really hoping that I get the surgery in the next like couple months. So I don't, I don't know. I don't really know when I'm going to have it. So I can't really go too far because if they have a cancellation, I want to be available to like go and do pre-op and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I'll be, I'll be talking about that on a video really soon. And then I'll follow up with a live stream about it so that if you guys have any questions, um, because it's getting closer. And so it's probably time to start talking about what's going on. Um, it's okay to spend that kind of money on yourself if doing so makes you feel thank you Thomas thank you um, Edward I am half French and half Swedish the carpet doesn't match the drapes uh, Crystal hey Crystal how are you just getting on I have been sickly sick sickly sick for the last three days oh no oh my gosh I hope you feel better prayers to you butterfly tracks thousand dollars last week for mouse damage to wiring not covered by warranty that happened to be two butterfly tracks so I know how you feel when I was um, building my van and it was in the desert the mice got into my wiring and I had to pay to get some of the stuff repaired and it was such a like waste of money but it had to be done Daya says I cut my own hair 
well just the ends yes sometimes i do like you know sometimes i just trim off or like do like a little like you know diagonal cut or trim off my bangs or whatever like that um but usually i just go to super cuts um actually last month i was at my parents house and my sister came by and she's a licensed cosmetologist so she actually trimmed my hair for me which i she hasn't done in ages so it was nice um so my hair is recently trimmed hey quirky girl how are you ellie may oh 57 awesome uh let's see gi jane when was a good movie uh chris rock is that chris rock chris r um so anyways um that's what's been going on in terms of uh you know stuff that's been going on with the van um just with my you know mood uh just trying to get things in order and yeah and just make new videos that are interesting and i'm kind of hovering around san diego um, and I'm also going to be like checking out maybe Orange County because I've never like I've never parked in Orange County before like in terms of like uh, like van life or you know checking out the areas and stuff but I've heard it's more friendly than San Diego so I'm part of like a bunch of van life groups on Facebook um, that's pretty much the only reason I go on Facebook is to look at the van groups and I've heard that a lot of people saying that there's like lots of different areas along the coast um, in the Orange County area that's a little more van friendly. So after I get my van fixed and, um, you know, get everything kind of taken care of that I need to, then I will probably maybe go a little bit up north. So I need to probably be in like, you know, within a day's drive away. Like I can't, like less than a day because I think I would only have like a short time to like you know be available so uh yeah i still want to like you know explore and check out different areas but sometimes you're restricted to certain things you know i get some comments from people saying like oh like you know um why don't you just drive here you should just drive there you should go here go there whatever whatever and I think the thing people don't get is like people living in vehicles still have regular lives like you still have other things that are happening responsibilities in life and family issues and money issues and health issues and all the things so I think people you know even if you see people like on YouTube or TikTok or anywhere you know you have to still consider that they have regular things that they got to take care of you know so when I get a lot of comments like that, it's like, yeah, I mean, I'd love to go all over the place, but right now I just can't. Meredith, yes. Yeah, I love that she was able to, to cut my hair. That was like a nice thing so that I didn't have to go to Supercuts. Hey, Tina from Mobile. Late joining so where you know. Um, welcome, welcome. Um, I am in um, San Diego, California. Hey, Brenda, how are you? Um, nope, you didn't miss too much. Um, oh, Kenny, awesome. You received a trial snack shirt. Awesome, awesome. Um, I don't know if, I haven't checked, but I didn't actually, actually get a um, notification that anybody bought from the travel snack store, which is weird because I have my notifications on. So that's cool. Like, yes, if you also, like, I just, just recently released travel snacks merch it has the logo on it, it ha we have t-shirts tank top tank tops for the ladies and a water bottle and stickers so if you want any travel snacks merch get it while you can because i'm not sure how long i'm going to keep it up there um if i die what brand um are you talking about like at the sally beauty supply um what i usually do is i go in there and i talk to the ladies that work at Sally's because a lot of them have been hairstylists in the past um, and they have a lot of good tips on like they'll look at your hair and they'll tell you like what brand would be best um, for your hair and they'll tell you like which one is like the best seller you know the one that most stylists use or stuff like that Edward that's funny curl up and die would be a good name for a hair salon oh my gosh that is actually pretty funny that is pretty funny 
Yes, the California redwoods are beautiful. I have been there and it is awesome. Oh, thank you, Grant, for posting that link for the merch. Um, so let's see. Um, let's play a couple games. Let's see. First of all, it also just goes to show. water. It's a very good for you. Hey, Betty Jo's cooking. How are you? Glad you're here. Um, who's ready to play some games? If you want to play a couple games, pop a thumbs up on here. And while we're doing that, let me just show you my view for the day. Not these kids. There's so many kids walking around, but so this is called Sunset Cliffs. There's like about four parking lots like this. And so I'm just sitting like, you know, where I can see. Don't look at my dirty wall, I gotta clean that. Um, it's just like a beautiful view. And these kids have been jumping off these cliffs, which apparently is illegal. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place to park. And it's like you're kind of like floating in the ocean. When you're sitting up, like where I'm able to sit up on my bed. It's just like such a beautiful, like, like not 360, but it's just like a beautiful way to see the ocean. This is one of my favorite places ever. Some of the kids were jumping off of, let's see, this cliff into there. So from that, at this guy might actually be doing it. Wait, let's watch. Oh, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do it. Okay, you guys watching? I think he's gonna do it, maybe. Oh no, oh, he's gonna do it. Or he's not. Oh no, here he goes. Okay, here we go. Oh, this makes me so nervous. Maybe not. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh, that makes me so nervous. Uh, let's check to make sure this dude is okay. All right, he's good, he's good, he's good, he's good, he's good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's see. That makes me so nervous to see that. But I guess these kids, they probably live over here and they probably do this all the time. So they're probably just so used to doing it. It is really beautiful here. It's one of my favorite places ever. Yeah, these kids have been jumping off all day. So, I don't know. All right, so let's see. Would you guys rather play, that is so scary. That's what I think. Would you guys rather me read one star reviews or would you guys rather play the game, will you press the button? I couldn't do it either. There's 0% chance I'm doing that. One slip and you're not clearing the rock. I mean, it's, I mean, to me, I'm like, I just don't even see how, I just don't even see how you would be comfortable doing that. But, you know, these kids are, these kids are young and fearless. I wouldn't be doing it because you can't, you can't hesitate at all. You have to be like confident. If you're going to jump off that cliff, you're gonna have to like just like just do it like go all out um, okay so we can either do will you press the button or I could read one star reviews from different restaurants or different establishments all right so we got two for press the button any other votes any other votes all right looks like we're gonna do will you press the button let me pull it up. Oops. Also, on a side note. On a side note. I was looking up churches in this area because I was thinking about like going to church today, which 
the time got away from me, so I didn't actually go to church today. But I was looking up churches, and one of the churches actually had like a lot of one-star reviews, and I'm I don't think I've ever seen that. Like they were the, they were talking about scandals in the church, and they were talking about like the pastor's a liar, and the pastor like took over this lady's mom's house, and like I was like they're spilling all the tea on these reviews for a church. I was actually like surprised. So that's crazy. I've never seen that before. Thanks for the reminder. I just gave her a thumbs up. Thank you. Thank you for the thumbs ups. Let me scooch over here. All right, let me. Let me open this thing. All right, so I'm just going to read this really quick because. In the past, I've done a couple of these where it was like really foul, so I want to make sure. I don't even know what this means, so I'm going to skip that one. Okay. Uh, no, that's not a good one. All right. Okay, so here's the first question. This is actually, some of these are so sad. The question is, your lifetime dream comes true. So think, let's take a moment to think of our lifetime dream. Okay, I got one, I got one in my head. Think of your lifetime dream, something that you would just like dream about, hoping that it happens and just like wish it would happen. But these kids are like cheering this guy on to jump off the cliff. No, don't do it. Hold on a second. Wait till they're done cheering. Don't do it, Dante. They shouldn't be cheering that guy on. He doesn't want to do it. Oh, these kids are making me so nervous. Hold on, let me show you so you guys can be part of what's happening. So there looks like Dante's in the middle. And they keep cheering them on. But these guys over here are like about to go. But Dante over here, he don't want to go. But they were like pressuring him. I don't want Dante to do it because he's scared. Oh, no, don't do it, Dante. All right, these kids are stressing me out. <sighs> All right, so the question is, okay, you got your lifetime dream, your lifetime dream, or, but if you get your lifetime dream, you're, you crush someone else's lifetime dream. You know what's wrong with this question is like, let's just say like, I choose, like my lifetime dream would be like to find the best husband and have the best family and like have a nice place and like travel and all these things right so let's just say that I said you know I'm gonna choose my lifetime dream over anybody else's and I know one person's lifetime dream is gonna get crushed but what if it happens to be like someone in my family or like that husband that I think I want what would it it would it could be like someone in your immediate closeness so you could really be screwing yourself if you choose your lifetime dream to crush like but you would be crushing someone else's lifetime's dream so what do you guys think 
Would you choose your lifetime dream if it's going to crush someone else's lifetime dream and you don't know whose dream it's going to crush? What's the matter with kids these days? Uh, Buka the van man. Hey, Allison, how much would you say is a safe emergency stash? I have 12K and sometimes think it's okay to take from as long as I have 10K. What's your opinion? I always think more of the... I mean, obviously, you got on the right track. More is best. But I would say for like... I mean, at the bare minimum, you should always have at least $1,000 set aside. I mean, that's like the most bare minimum that I think anybody should have for emergencies. And I'm just kind of focusing on like vehicle maintenance. Um, but... I would say, at, like, I think it's good to think if you have at least. Uh, if you have ten thousand, that's a good, that's a good solid number. I would say if you have at least three thousand, you know, I don't know how much all the things cost, like new transmission, new this, new that. But I would say, you know, set aside one to three thousand dollars if you possibly can, possibly can. Also. Um, a lot of these mechanics, I'm not condoning this, but I know sometimes you have to do it, but a lot of them offer like financing, not through them directly, but they have like companies that will finance you in terms of like, almost like a credit card sort of, sort of thing where you can like make payments on your repairs. Um, but I try not, I don't do that, but I'm, I'm saying you should try not to do that because there's interest on those. Um, but if you had like one to $3,000, I think that would be a really solid place to start from so even if you did have to finance the rest you wouldn't be financing all the things so I mean that's a good place to start but ten thousand is a really solid uh, emergency fund and I think you can dip into it as long as you probably keep that ten thousand I think that's a good good way to go a mother's worst fear I know Jaws 3d is coming oh no don't do it Dante at my age, I would give it to the other person. I'm 72. Aww. Meredith and Daya say no. Colette says, I wouldn't crush someone else to get what I want. Ellie Mae says no. I look at I look at vehicle replacement. Oh, yeah, that's a good good thing to, re, to consider as well. Nowadays, they probably would not think about it. So, yes, I would do it. Uh, no, nah, I wouldn't want it at that cost unless the lifetime dream of the other person is to be a serial killer. Oh, my gosh. That's a twist, Rose. That's a twist. Oh, Grant. I'm already living my lifetime dream with Jackie. How sweet. You guys are so sweet. Uh, hey, Siren Karen. Uh, if my lifetime dream would be peace on earth, then maybe I'm crushing a terrible person like Hitler, whose lifetime dream was world chaos. Ooh, that's a twist as well. I am a monk and don't review churches. Uh, that is a hard question, Mountain Wonder. I think it's a hard question, too. Thank you, Grant, for blocking. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it's a hard question because, like, you know, you want good things in life, but you also don't want it to be at the expense of other people. And I also think, like, maybe if you deny yourself your lifetime dream, then maybe you'll get a different, like not bonus but like something else good will happen to you where maybe it won't be your lifetime dream or might be not the thing that you wanted but you'll still get something good so I think I would say no like at first I was gonna say screw everybody else I'm getting my lifetime dream that sounds really harsh I wasn't gonna say that but uh, but no like I, I don't think I could do it because I would know in the back of my head that I was like crushing someone's dream and I know that like personally I think God will provide so either way even if I don't get my dream I'm pretty sure like I'll still have a great life so I think I would say I wouldn't press the button I want the kid to jump but not get hurt I'm I'm so different he didn't jump and then the the uh, fire and rescue came by and told him don't jump or you're gonna get a citation hey Deb G how are you Mount Wanderer, considering my lifetime dream is to get away from a narcissistic person, I think I'd probably take it. My sanity is probably more important. I mean, in that circumstance, you know, that's more about, like, being in a healthy position, like, a better place. <laughs> Jackie. Grant, that was so sweet, what you said about your wife. Oh, that's so sweet. All right, so I don't think we're going to press this button, right? We're all collectively 
I know that there was a couple of you saying that you would press the button, but I think we're collectively saying we're not going to press the button. So we're going to click I will not. And let's see. The connection's really slow on my phone, so we'll see what it says. It'll give us a percentage of like who, like how many people pressed the button and how many didn't. Oh, it's hot in Florida. I feel for you, Deb. I feel for you. Um, right now it's like 77 degrees in San Diego and it's, I'm loving it. I am 100% loving it. No internet, come on. Hold on, I gotta put my phone on airplane mode, then take it off airplane mode so it can like try to reconnect and hold it over here. Go. Okay, so, oh, 71% of people are selfish. They pressed the button. Only 29% didn't. I guess we're in the, min the minority at this time. That's okay. I'm okay with that. We're all a good group of people that didn't crush anybody's uh, dreams. And we were sacrificing our own dreams. So I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. I know. That's a lot, right? 71% of the people would crush somebody else's dreams. Still almost 100. And Oklahoma today has gotten up to 104. Oh, my gosh. That's good. Sheesh. All right, so let's do, let's do, um, 71% aren't married to Jackie. I mean, that's true. I don't mind being in the minority for that. I agree. Let's do two more and then we'll wrap it up for the day. If I could ever get this thing to go. Oh, this is actually a good one. Okay, this next question is you can perfectly speak any five languages of your choosing. So five, think of five languages that you'd love to speak, okay? But you forget your native language permanently, so you can no longer speak English. So you can speak all five languages fluently, easily, no problems, but you could never speak your native language permanently. What do you think? Will you press the button? Will you press the button? That's a tricky one because it would be very cool to speak a bunch of other languages and be able to like communicate to like all kinds of different people. But also, I don't really have friends that speak just only other languages. No, not pressing. Jackie says, can I type it? Oh, Mount Wanderer says no. Um, I don't think so. I think you, it says you forget your native, you forget your native language permanently. So you forget, so you don't even know. Uh, Daya says no. Colette and Cien says no. Uh, the question is, you can perfectly speak any five languages of your choosing, but you'll forget your native language permanently. Oh, Tracy, that's a twist. Can one be English? No, because that's your native language. Press the button. Nope. Rose says, that's a tough one. Brenda and Ellie Mae says, nope. Jackie says, yes. Jackie's going for it. What are your five languages going to be, Jackie? It is kind of a hard one because it'd be very cool to speak like Spanish, Italian, maybe Japanese. I don't know, like Portuguese maybe. And I don't know, maybe sign language. That's, that's, that would be a good one. I know sign language you don't speak, but it's still a language. No, because because too many others speak the English language here anyways. Yes. 
Exactly. I don't like to talk that much. <laughs> I mean, that's a good point too. Like how many people, you know, how much talking do I need to do? Um, Rose, can one be English, Latin, Gaelic, Spanish, French? Hmm. Uh, Tracy says, I'm going to say no because I live in Engl an English-speaking country. Deb says, yes, I can't speak good English now. <laughs> Crystal says, well, I mean that more... I mean that more speak English than any other language, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Like, I think a lot of places, like a lot of people do already know English. So I think it, I think I'm going to say no. I think most of us said no. So we're going to hit the no. Uh, okay, so, okay, so we were in the majority, but only 51%. Um, 49% pressed the button. So 49% wants to speak the five languages and 51 did not. Jackie's going with French, sign language, Spanish, Ukrainian, and Eskimo. Oh, those are good ones. Those are really good ones. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Just got from church. What did I miss? Well, we talked about a lot of things today. Uh, Rosa says not much difference. Hey, Lori, how are you? Did I say we were going to do one more or two more? Do you guys want to do one more or are you done? I don't mind doing another one if you guys want to do another one. Grant says one more, one more. All right. Okay, we're going with one more, one more, one more. God is good. Amen, Lori. Amen. Eskimo is not the language, but want to speak whatever is actually called. I, I got you. <laughs> All right. Um, okay. Um, this is a weird one, too. <laughs> you can fly for any amount of time. So you got flying powers but you are tragically afraid of heights. What does that mean, tragically afraid of heights? Like, you're gonna have a heart attack? Like, you're gonna poop yourself? Like, what does tragically afraid of heights mean? Do they mean like extremely afraid of heights? Because tragically to me sounds like a tragedy, like, you know, something tragic happens to you. So I would just say that you're like terribly afraid of heights. I like sign language, yes. So so would you choose to fly for any amount of time, but you're afraid of heights, basically. So I mean, I think they mean like super, super power flying. It doesn't specify. It just says you can fly for any amount of time, but you're tragically afraid of heights. That seems sucky. Like that doesn't seem enjoyable then. If you're, if you can't get over your fear, like, I'm wondering if you can get over your fear at some point or if you're always going to be afraid of the heights. Because if you're, if you're in a full panic every time you're flying, then it wouldn't be worth it. So let's just take off the tragically part because that seems excessive. I always thought that Mary Ann was hotter than Ginger, the professor. Uh, Colette says fly. Uh, Rose, flying in an airplane, no. My own power, yes. Flying at 10 feet high, LOL. <laughs> Probably you wouldn't, yeah, that, that might be good. 10 feet, it's not too high. Probably you wouldn't fly, so what good would that be? Exactly, that's what I'm thinking too. Daya's gonna fly though. Tragic, uh, tra Tracy says, it is tragic to be afraid of heights. I mean, it is. Ellie may no. I'm gonna stay grounded if I'm gonna be stressed. That's what I'm thinking, Meredith. Crystal says, nah. Tracy says, I'm afraid of heights now. Yes. Mount Wanderer is saying yes. Brenda says nope. Don't to fly. Tracy says nope to flying for me. It looks, I look at it like this. God's got me. Fact. Uh, can I fly with my eyes closed? I mean, you could, but you might run into something. D. Jackson, no for me. Uh, I'm going to say no, because 
if it's not like I think the whole point of having flying powers is to be able to like be free and like enjoy yourself and like whip around all over the place to the, like different states and cities and countries and just like go here and there but if you're like afraid the whole time and you're like shaking or you're just like it's like oh and you're just like stomach is dropping and you're just like feeling like oh how enjoyable would that be I don't think I don't think I don't think it'd be enjoyable at all so I'm gonna pass on it oh my god here comes that darn ice cream guy that song drives me nuts sitting outside oh no Rose says, I'm not afraid of heights. I have problems coming down. Oh, man. That's me too. Like, Rose, I don't like when I'm on like a, a hill that's like really curvy and you're coming down driving. It like makes me so nervous. Um, just the coming down part because you're getting like kind of close to the edge. That part I don't like. I don't like that. Meredith says, exactly. Colette, even if you don't fly, it would be awesome to have the option. It is probably true, Colette, now that you're saying that. Because, like, what if there was an emergency and you need to get somewhere fast? Even if you're afraid, you you could do it. So you make a solid point there. Language is English is universal. Yes. It could work to get over your fear. If, if you could get over the fear then I would say yes. But if you're constantly going to always be, you know, scared, then I'd say no. I think most of us said no. So we're going to click the I will not. Oh, 70% 70 70 of people pressed the button. So 70% chose the flying, even if they're going to be scared. And only 30% said no. So I guess people would rather just go with their fear and just do it. Rose says, it's amazing how we can overcome fear. As a man thinks in his heart, he is. Agreed. See, this question bothers me because, like, if I had flying powers, I would figure out a way to get over my fear because I think it'd be so awesome to be able to fly. But this question makes it seem like you could never get over it but in real life if I could like I think flying is a real life power but I'm saying like if you could have flying powers I think that I would be like over time you'd get used to how you can use that flying so then you would just be like oh okay now I feel like 10% less nervous 10% more or less nervous like you know you'd start getting better at it uh, Jackie says no. Rose says it's amazing. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, Mirrors love. What what is that metallic thing underneath your wood shelf? It's a, this is my reading light. Um, yeah, awesome. Okay, so all right. Well, that was fun. Um, I'm always in the cautious side of life. Been that way my whole life. I've never flown in a plane. Oh, you've never flown? I'm just thinking, like, I've flown so many times. Debbie, when going downhill, I feel like I'm in the front seat of a roller coaster. Yes, I don't like it. Uh, that's really something that you've never flown in a plane. I don't think I know one person that's like never flown. That's incredible. Rose says, Fears ha Rose says fear has its place. It can keep us alive. We just can't let it drive the bus. I agree. Fear definitely has a place. It's it's meant to guide us. It shouldn't overtake us, though. But, yeah, it should definitely guide us. It's a good thing to have. Uh, you're afraid of flying. I have a cure. Come to Canada, and we get on a plane. You get a parachute. I push you out of the plane. Skydiving. Oh, no. Tracy says, I fly a lot. It's okay once above the clouds. Yes. <gasps> Colette, you've never flown either? How many people on here have never flown? Like ever in a whole time of your life? That's crazy. Like, I'm not, I'm just so intrigued by this. Kimmy, I was, oh my gosh. Like never in the whole ever's? I guess, I guess if you've never flown, I guess it's like, maybe you don't ever want to fly. Never been near a plane. 
I've only been on a helicopter once. Oh my gosh. I just flew in a plane for the first time last year and I'm 61. Edward, I have uh, I've always played dumb. Where did it get me all around the world? I mean planet. I'll take flying over driving any day. Um, I don't love to fly. I will fly to get places, but I don't, it's not my favorite. Um, and I don't mind driving. I don't like to drive like a lot of hours a day, but I don't mind it. You know, I like road trips. Um, I only, let's see, I only flew once when I was in Civil Air Patrol as a teenager. WG, I've only flown once. Well, two times, two times, Vegas and back. This is such an interesting conversation that we've never had before. Kimmy, I was, I was serving, I'm terrified of heights. Okay. I know there's a lot of people that are like so nervous about flying or like terrified of heights or, um, you know, just like have like this massive gripping fear of, you know, flying because they don't want to like get in a crash or something. So I do know that that's like a real huge fear of a lot of people. I don't plan to fly anymore. I've flown once since 9-11. I didn't enjoy that. Oh my goodness. Uh, like I said, flying is not my favorite. Like, you know, I don't, I'm not the kind of person that's like, oh, let's like get on a plane. I'm so excited to go. I don't really enjoy it. The whole process of it. I don't enjoy like going to the airport. I don't enjoy the whole thing. It's like so, so many people, so stressful, so many rules, so many like things you got to remember and think about. So it is pretty stressful, but I look at it as a means to an end. So like if I want to travel internationally or something, then I don't mind, you know, jumping on a plane in order to like get somewhere. But you know, it's not my favorite thing to do, but I, I don't know for sure, but I really do want to go. Like I haven't been anywhere internationally in a few years, partly due to the pandemic and partly just because I've been in my van, but I really do want to like, maybe take an international trip next year. Um, so it's something that I am considering, um, but that's like something I haven't even started planning or anything like that. So um, we'll see. Um, here's all, I've always wanted to drive down the Americas on a van from Alaska, Yukon border down to Tierra del Fuego and Chile. Oh, that would be awesome. Tracy, I like getting to other places by plane, but I'm uh, scared of heights. Yes. I'm not afraid of heights in that sense, but I don't, I don't love it. And the driving would have actually been faster. The layover was almost as long as the drive. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. Hey, Rebecca, how are you? I wonder if I've only flown once in my 50 years. It just hasn't been needed or very fast. Oh my gosh. Interesting. Hey, C. Allen, how are you dealing with this heat? You know what? I finally got out of the heat. Um, I finally got out of the heat. I am in San Diego and it's like 77 degrees and it's beautiful. So I was like so much more irritated and so like, so just like, ah, like felt like so angry being in the heat, you know? So I had to get out of it. I had to get out, but yeah, the desert was just too hot. Um, Tracy says, yeah, to Australia. Yes come to Australia. Oh yeah. Uh, I would love to come to Australia. That would be, that would be good. That's a very long flight, but I think that I, are you guys still having all the lockdowns? I don't even know what's still going on over that with all that. Do you think van life could ruin relationships? I've seen so many van life couples break up in the past couple years. You know what? That's a really good question. Um, and I'm only going to be speaking from like what I think because I haven't been in a relationship while I'm living in the van. Um, but I think that you really have, I think Dante jumped. I think Dante jumped. I think he finally jumped. Um, I think, and then another guy jumped. Um, I think you really have to like be close, like already have an established relationship where you already know that person because if you're just starting out and you don't know that person and you don't know like the boundaries yet, I think it could get uncomfortable real quick because I'm a loving person. I, I love being in a, in a relationship, but I also like having my space and like I do things my certain way, just like all of us do. I like to have time alone. I need time to think. 
and if somebody's up under me all the time I wouldn't love it but I would like to be with that person a lot so it's a balance um, but I think that a lot of times if people are living in the same van you really have to like make plans and you really have to dedicate some time to like this is my time in the van this is your time in the van this maybe you should go watch a movie maybe you should go to the gym or like I think you need a part time as well or you need to have other things because there are a lot of people that don't make it because they just get annoyed with each other um, and you see every nook and cranny every bad habit every ugly part of that person and also every beautiful part of that person so I think it'd be very difficult to live in like a van even like I think you could do it maybe a little bit better in an RV if there's like a separate bedroom and a separate living room or space um, but in one van especially when you have pets too that could get like old real quick uh, so I think that's maybe why people kind of have a breakdown because it could be just too much uh, for one person or two people I don't think it's like I think it's not van life that's ruining the relationship I think it's people's lack of planning Crystal says I love the flying but not the hustle and bustle at the airport and tight squeeze into the seats on one of the planes now if I could afford first class that would be awesome I mean that's I've never had first class flights so that would be awesome there are actually more car crashes than airplane crashes that's actually so true doing good hot and humid oh my gosh I bet nope lockdown lockdown wait nope lockdown over so is COVID testing to fly Ooh, it, it is a long flight but it's doable I've come to the States twice Ooh, awesome the thing is couples need their own time in a house you can go to the movie while your partners partner stays home but you couldn't do that in a van yes yeah you definitely need like you need time away from each other Rose says my late husband and I lived in a truck together for a few months I had to get out of his truck and we were both very nice polite people yes I mean you could be two people could be like the nicest loving patient people of all but like in a in a tight space I mean that's really really extra a couple needs their own vans and travel travel together I agree crystal I think if I um, was traveling with somebody the ideal situation would be two vans you know so we could park next to each other and like you know sometimes just kind of park away from each other and then come together and like go to dinner and it'd be so much better because you'd have a moment to like breathe that's the ideal um, Edward says my mom died at 93 last year I'm sorry to hear that Edward she never had a driver's license she was not from New York City oh interesting I do know a couple people that don't have driver's licenses I I know one girl I went to high school with that like never got her driver's license she's never could do it and so I've definitely known people that don't drive but I don't think I've ever met anybody that's never flown that's so interesting to me I never even thought of that I've flown a lot um, yeah I've been on a lot of planes <laughs> it's not my favorite like I said I've seen some van lifers with toilets in their van compost uh, compostable so if and if one needs to use it hey honey it's negative 300 Celsius for not freezing outside could you get out so I could poop I mean I think sometimes you would have to poop like in front of your partner you'd for sure be peeing in front of your partner because like me I go to the bathroom like three times a night so like if my partner would be in here sleeping I'd be peeing like two seconds away like no you would definitely be peeing for sure and if you had to poop in the middle of the night I don't think anyone's getting out of a van especially if you're in like trying to be like stealthy so I'm saying all the nooks and crannies you're gonna be you're gonna be seeing things and hearing things that you don't want to and that I think that like chips you down a little bit about the attraction maybe two people in a van is too much unless you are super tight your explanation is good in the army on deployment you see everyone's true self yeah that's true lots of people in New Zealand don't fly most of my friends in New Zealand have oh interesting 
not under it. There's a difference between living in a van permanently and traveling in a van for an extended time. The latter would be easier and the former would be impossible for me. That is a very good point. I think if you're on a road trip, you could do it. Like, I for sure think, like, if you were, like, you know there's an end point and you're, like, even, you know, a month with somebody, you could do it because you'd be like, okay, you know, we're just, like, having a good time and then we're going to go somewhere and have our own space. But, like, not having an end date for that and always being together, I think it'd be really difficult no matter how much you like love that person nuts and crit nuts and crazy omg i laughed at that uh, i didn't drive until i was almost 30 but i was in a very controlling abusive marriage oh no i'm sorry to hear that hey marianne how are you the uh fire and rescue guys are coming to tell people to stop jumping all right, so we've been going for almost an, uh, over an hour and a half now. So we're going to wrap it up for today. Uh, I'm going to, I think if I can get out. Yeah, I can get out. I thought the fire and rescue was still parked behind me. Um, I think I'm going to like start packing up my stuff. And uh, I need to go get groceries. I'm putting it off because I don't really feel like doing it. But... I really need to because if I don't do it right now, I'm not going to be prepared for the week and you know, I find that if I'm not prepared, that's when I want to like just grab something and snack. So if I have like vegetables to snack on, um, then that makes it so much easier. And if I have my meals already planned out, then it makes it 10 times easier. So I do need to go to the grocery store. Hey Marianne, I'm doing good. Thank you, Colette. Thank you, Tracy. Um, so I hope you guys have an excellent, excellent rest of your Sunday. Uh, I hope you guys have a great week. If I don't come on live, it's just because I am dealing with the van and like dealing with other appointments and stuff like that. But I will try to, um, to pop on and we can have a couple other chats. Um, bye, Gaia. Yes, I have flown outside of the U.S. many times. Uh, yes. So you guys have a great rest of your day. Thank you, Grant, for moderating and just being there. And I appreciate you guys, appreciate you guys very, very much. I love you guys. And I hope you guys have a great weekend, rest of your weekend. And I will talk to you later. Bye. Hey, Q Margo. Bye.